we now move to a, uh, a entirely different presentation on the uh, diagnostic performance of combined non-invasive coronary angiography and myocardial perfusion imaging, the 320 row uh, detector CT. And it's going to be Dr. Zhao Lima presenting. Thank you. These are my disclosure slides. The benefits of revascularization are clearly highest in patients who have coronary artery disease that are flow limiting and uh, hemodynamically significant. Invasive angiography and CT angiography are limited in delineating flow limiting lesions, which are detected generally by perfusion imaging or FFR combined with the angiographic method. A single test that could non-invasively evaluate the severity of a lesion and its hemodynamic significance would be highly desirable for the management of patients with symptomatic CAD. So the main objectives of the CORE 320 trial that I'm uh, delighted to present this morning were to evaluate the diagnostic performance of combined CTA and CTP to identify patients with flow-limiting coronary artery disease compared with invasive angiography and SPECT myocardial perfusion imaging. We also looked at the incremental value of CT perfusion over and above CT angiography. We uh, looked also at how these modalities predicted whose patients underwent uh, revascularization in relation to the reference standard here, which was invasive angiography plus SPECT MPI. We studied 381 patients from 16 hospitals in eight countries who were clinically referred for um, uh, catheterization and uh, also underwent SPECT MPI and uh, a combined CT angiography and myocardial perfusion scan. This was, at the same time, the same scan uh, was first done at rest, then we wait 15 minutes, give adenosine, and repeated the, the study to look at perfusion. The techniques uh, uh, that were used to analyze the data for the angiogra uh, angiographic side, uh, two readers, uh, went over the data in the same fashion, even though they were completely blinded to each other. In the perfusion side, the SPEC core lab was actually at the Brigham, and uh, CT core lab was at Hopkins. And again, double-blinded analysis by two readers, and the same scales were used to grade the perfusion defects. I show you this table because I'm going to present the tables, uh, I'm going to present the data to you for the entire group, but also for the group without coronary artery disease. The steering committee up front decided that we were going to include everybody. So you can see this is the typical patient characteristics for a population that is going for cath. It has 25% of individuals who had a previous MI, 29% of individuals who had a previous PCI. So I'm going to show you the data for the entire group and then minus people with known CAD. Here's for the entire group. The area under the curve was 0 0.89, and there was an incremental um, uh, value to CT perfusion because the area under the curve for, for the angiographic uh, test alone was only 0 0.81. So uh, when we add perfusion, we gain power to uh, diagnose uh, uh, the flow-limiting uh, stenosis. So, and this is an important point to make, is that the bar here is much higher. We're not going to, um, uh, for the stenotic lesion alone. We want the stenotic lesion with a downstream perfusion defect. The area on the right here, the area under the curve, shows that if you compare CT angiography combined with CT perfusion, they have the same power as invasive angiography and SPECT MPI in defining who are the patients who end up going through uh, uh, revascularization. So at this point, the technology could be used to precisely define the patients who have flow-limiting disease and therefore are going to need revascularization. Let's look now at the patients who don't have a history of, um, uh, of known heart disease. For that, the power is actually 0 0.93, the area under the curve. So that's very powerful, and I'll show you how you can use this uh, clinically. If you took like the presence of one perfusion,
perfusion of any perfusion defect as the cutoff point, then the sensitivity would be 97, the negative predicted value would be 98, but you have a low specificity. But if you go, uh, if you choose, for example, four, uh, some stress score, uh, so a significant perfusion defect, now you're talking about 80% sensitivity, 80% uh, specificity and still a very high power, a negative predicted uh, a value of 92 to exclude somebody with a flow limiting um, uh, stenosis. So in conclusion, combined CT angiography and CT perfusion can detect flow limiting stenosis defined by um, invasive angiography with an associated SPECT MPI defect. Um, I should say that the radiation uh, used uh, by the entire CT protocol was still the same as the nuclear uh, protocol, and they were about 9.3 millisieverts. CT perfusion adds significantly to the diagnostic power of CT angiography alone, and the combination of CT angiography and CT perfusion in one non-invasive examination is useful in identifying the patients who will benefit the most from revascularization and to guide the management of CAD. Thank you.